about to get started. Hello, everyone. Let me share this real quick, and then we'll get started. Um, I don't want to invite to share. Oh, goodness. Struggle is real. This Sunday. Okay. So hopefully my worldwide crowds out there tonight. Um, <clears throat> hope everybody is doing well. Uh, happy Sunday. Last week I wasn't with you. I almost didn't make it this week. But by the grace of God, I'm here. And so are you. Um, I've had a headache today. And it's still kind of there. And as my, I can hear my dad saying it right now. Well, son, you know what? If I had a head like yours, mine would hurt too. And then he would always say this too. Just the, just the icing on the cake. Son, it'll feel good when it quits hurting. That you can be sure of. Thanks, Dad. But those are true, two very truthful statements. Um, it's just sometimes the truth is the truth, and it is true, but we just don't, it's, it's not the time and place, right? So, cheesy dad joke wisdom. I mean, my daddy, he's something else. My mama had jokes too, but they were on the other side, like the corny jokes. And then, so I got both of them. Like, some of those will come out when I'm teaching. Yeah, I got blessed on two ends. So, anyways, um, hope everybody is doing well, as I always say. Um, right now, I want to, um, to y'all quit. My kids start playing whenever I get on TV. Bruce, get over there. Sorry about that. Um, but anyways, I have some prayers at the end that I'm going to do. Um, so if you have a prayer request, please put that in the comments so I can include them. But we have some people fighting cancer. We have some people fighting COVID. We have some people fighting for their life, literally. And I'm gonna kick these dogs out. Y'all are pal. Go play in your room. Go play. We'll see how long that lasts. Cause I'll hear Bruce here in a minute. <laughs> but, 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 anyways. Um, um, yeah, so, it's been a tough week, um, I have to say that, but you know what, what I've learned about all weeks, good or bad, Jesus is the beginning and he's the end, and he's in between as well, and he's good, and he is faithful, no matter if this world is, no matter who in this world you're counting on, the Lord is good and he is faithful to the end. And that is my hope. Like it's a time to have a, 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 a hope check. So I like to say, like, what is your anchor on? What are you anchoring your hope on? Is it financial? Is it jobs? Is it your relationship? Is it your success? Is it how many people like you, how many people don't. Like some people love that. Like I got so many enemies, I'm just, I'm thriving. And then when people are not their enemy no more, it's like, who am I? <laughs> so, so anyways, that's what we're gonna talk about tonight is grace actually. And um, it's hard to describe, but let me tell you something right now. That sounded really bad. Like, let me tell you something right now. <laughs> But I say this with, with sincerity. By God's grace, we are all taking the next breath. He is the reason we've taken any breaths. He's the reason we're here. He's the reason we have anything. And if you don't believe that, then you have been fooled. He is in all. He is the creator. We are his creation. And often we forget it's about what I can do and what I can build over here. So God will be proud of me. And it's like, I love you, child, but I don't need that. I just need you. 
Me? But, 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 but look what I did for you. And he gives us grace. Thank goodness. But, you know, it's just a lot of people bank on that. So let me ask you this. When is the last time you have been given grace or showed grace or received grace or accepted grace? And then when was the last time that you extended that grace? Like truly extended it. And, and I wrote this in a book a couple of years ago in a journal. You know me and... I love writing um, exercises because I believe we should exercise the spirit. We should, it, it grows dormant if we are not seeking it, if we're not awakening it, and we're not, we're all in our head. You know, there's, there's not much grace in it. And you, what you'll find is you're not a very graceful person. Yeah. Um, Speaking for me, I, I, I call this grace flows, and I tried to explain it to high schoolers, and I think some of them got it to the degree that they can get it, but what I say is grace must flow, and what that means is, see, grace, we receive grace by God, right? We may receive grace by others. They might not say that, but they're praying for us, or they're forgiving us, and we don't even know that we did anything wrong. Like, you ever had that person like, I, I've forgiven you. Uh, for what? <laughs> and it's like, in all honest truth, people are just one thing to the next. And it's like, what are you, what are you talking about? Oh, I didn't even think of that. And here we are, we've been holding that and, and we're, we're finally letting go of what we thought was a hold on them. But if this grace comes in, then the grace must also flow through us and out. And this is a term that I am going to, I think I'm going to make a t-shirt. I've been, it's on my mind, it's on my heart. But I, I came up with this term. I don't know where it came from, so it's from the Lord, it must be. But don't be a grace hog. Well, what do you mean by that? What I mean is that when you have received grace, which all of us have been gifted God's grace. Now, the, the, the question is, have you received it? Have you truly accepted it? And sometimes that's, okay, I have accepted it. But are you, are you extending that to, onto others? Well, yeah, the ones I want to. You might not say that, but do you pause? Do you literally pause throughout your day and say, does this person deserve the grace God has given me? That's when we get in trouble because you know what? Every time, if you bring your mind into it and this, the way the world thinks, tick for tat, uh, pro quo, whatever, quit, whatever it's called, it's just you do this for me, I do this for you, I scratch your back, you scratch mine, you look out for me, I look out for you. And I can guarantee your mind will remember that this person doesn't deserve it. So I'm not going to show it to them. I might not say that, but I'm holding on to that grace. And see, the cool thing about it is when we give grace, God gives us more. And we become a grace-filled person. Our life becomes filled with grace. And we used to sing that hymn back in the day, right? You know, amazing grace. Just how great grace is. Amazing it is. And being the kid that I am, I've shared this so many times with other people, it's probably a um, broken record, but I literally thought, I didn't know, and maybe this is just a dumb kid, I'm not saying it's the church or whatever, but I was like, who is grace? Like, does she, like, visit on every other weekend? Like, is she in the Bible class? Like, who is this amazing grace? Because I never met her. But we sing about her all the time. <laughs> and I don't get it. And, of course, it's not a person. 
it could be a person, it could be Jesus, but grace is amazing, but it's grace. Explain grace, try to define grace, and you always fall short. And it's, it's best to say it's unmerited favor and forgiveness, I would say. And what happens in America and our culture it's like we all want everything given to us, but we really don't. We don't. Like truly deep down, we want to earn it. If, if I don't earn this, then it really don't count. You know, if you get what you work for, and that's a great concept, it really is, but our world has become entitled. And it's like, oh, okay, yeah, show me some grace. Okay, what is grace? Well, I don't know, but I'm... I just need some. <laughs> okay. Interesting. So so that's when it becomes these grace hogs to say. And we get people that are angry, resentful, hurt, um, whatever it may be. And it's like, ah, extend grace to everybody. And and I'll ask you this. That's that's great if you do. But is it everybody that you think you should? Or is it everybody that you think you're better than? Like, do you have grace for your pastor and your ministers and your church and your leaders and, and those people too? Or does it stop where, like, I have grace for criminals. I have grace for killers and murderers. But past that, like, no, they're on their own. And see, your life becomes smaller. When you start holding on to grace, it, you become filled with it. <laughs> and the thing is, is that you got to give it away so you can receive more. So hence, don't be a grace hog. That's our challenge and the, the thing of this, this video tonight. I've been wanting to talk on this, but um, I don't know. I just got the okay today, I felt like. And and I feel like a lot of people talk about grace, maybe mentioning grace, we sing about it, but do we truly, truly, truly let it flow through us? Does our life, is it, is it marked with grace? Because um, I'm gonna share some scriptures here soon that says that it is by grace that any of us are here. It's by grace, a gift. The thing about a gift is, you can't earn it. And it's like, so so what's what's the good in that? Like <laughs> if it's if it's for everybody, then why I mean I'm not special then. Okay, true. But you are special. And it's only by grace that you can say the words you just said. It's only by grace that you have the house around you. It's only by grace that you have a job, that you have what we have, our possessions, our money, but often those things turn to possess us. We can't, we can't give it away. The more we get, the more we want. And it's like, I'm so done with clutter and materialism that it gives me a headache to even think about like all the crap I had in my house that I didn't even touch. And yet there's people out here that I pass every day that don't have anything. And you know what? I'll be completely honest. It was hard to get away some of that stuff because your your mind, here's the deal, okay? <laughs> your mind, if you if you stop for a little bit and ask your mind, your ego or whatever it is, does that, do, do, I could probably use this on down, the work, on down the line. So instead of, instead of, it's like books, like I'll probably read this one again and I'll never read it again. Instead of that book, I could give it to someone else that it could bless their life instead of sitting on my cabinet. And eventually those books will possess you. They have a hold on you because what you can't give away 
possesses you. And to pick up your cross daily means that you have to have open hands to pick that thing up means you can't hold something else to it. You got to hold it and it's heavy. And you got to follow Christ and you got to pick up your cross daily. And and to me, you can't Here's the deal is you don't want all this stuff on your back that you're trying to carry across too. I mean, it just it just doesn't work. And but I'm reminded that by God's grace that he is the lifter. All he asks for us to do is show up and be willing. And it starts with receiving his grace. It's like Christmas time now, right? And it's Thanksgiving. And it's like Thanksgiving is one of my favorite holidays. It used to be one of my least favorite because it didn't mean presents. <laughs> Just being honest, like, oh, we got to go to grandma's. Like, I love my grandmas, but I'm just saying, you know, back to the kid. Oh, we got to go there. Or Thanksgiving, oh, this is the worst. But I'll go at Christmas when there's a gift there, okay? No, no problem with that. But Thanksgiving, mm, see, I don't, I don't think we should worry about it, you know? Less is more, right? But it's sad because when you start doing that, when you start limiting and judging who deserves God's grace, that's when you get in trouble. That's when you become judgmental. You become just this person that is is brittle. It's just filled with anger and resent and what others don't do for me or what other what I've done for others. And I have the receipt and I have a filing cabinet full of them. And I can tell you exactly what I did for this person and they don't appreciate it. Maybe so. I'm not saying that. But here's the deal is God didn't keep the receipt when he gave you his son. Right? Now, I know it was a gift. I did. It, it says he saved us while yet we were sinners. And, and, and here's the deal is we often hold our grace. It's not our grace, by the way. You're given grace by God. So that's God's grace to share with others, with one another. It says to love one another. That's my main command. And you can't do it if you don't have grace because you will pick out and you will only want to love those that deserve it. I've heard many people say this. Um, when you talk about grace, like what's grace? Well, well, I mean, I've heard of it. Can't really define it. Um, I've seen it. I mean, I think, right? Grace, like, I guess it's like when someone does something for someone and they don't pay them back or whatever. Like, this is our country, I'm telling you. And, it, and grace is hard to explain. But that don't mean we can't talk about it. We can't try to do our best. And the best way to do it, let me tell you, is to give it away. Quit judging and quit determining who deserves God's grace. Because remember, it is God's gift to you. So therefore you can share it with others or not. But you're, you're withholding God's grace upon others. I'll never, I mean, think about this. You will encounter a lot of people that are not grace-filled. And there will be a handful of people in your life that you'll encounter that they're filled with the grace of the Lord and you won't forget them. You, that person will forever be imprinted in your life. And being an image of God, that's what I hope my life is about. And the more I try to hold on to grace... <laughs> the more I just come cluttered and it's not, my life is not flowing. I'm, I'm trying to hold on to things while the river's just going. 
And it, it, it comes down to this conscious thing of, do they, does this person really deserve it? Be honest with yourself. You know you asked yourself that. What if you went through a day and said, look, I don't deserve God's grace. And you know what? You get grace and you get grace and you get grace. And guess what? You get grace and grace and more grace. As Paul says, or in John 1.16 says, and from his fullness, we all have received grace upon grace. So why, what can we do about this? We're going back to this, sorry. We, we meet those people say, I've heard of grace. I've seen grace. Like I've, I've heard of this place that you're talking about or this band or whatever. I've heard them on TV or I've seen them on TV. I know of this person. Um, I know someone who is alive only by the grace of God. I've heard someone say that. And I'm like, oh, really? Like, tell me your story. No, not me. My friend. <laughs> Not me, my friend. Let me tell you how messed up he was. Let me just tell you. And we'll spill the beans and say how wrong they were. And, and we're doing it for, for the name of Jesus. Like we're, we're, we're telling them, and glory to God. Uh, so we're gonna tell this, these people everything this person has done. And then what I would go on to ask them, and I have, I said, so, but have you received God's grace? Well, I mean, yeah, sure. I mean, I think I have. I mean, it's amazing. Um, okay. Like, so well, what are you doing with that? And, and this comes down to um, all of us have a story but God brings us to a place where we can't justify it by our own means. We can't justify. We can't, we can't um, do anything about it. So accept it for what it is and to ask God to, to carry me through this. And that was my divorce. And I didn't know grace before that. But then I found it. And it's like, I didn't deserve it. I didn't. I didn't deserve what happened to me, but neither did Jesus. I didn't deserve what those people did to me and how hurt I was and still the way it impacts me and those that I love. I couldn't forgive, I was angry, I was hurt. So my life became this like keeping records of wrongs and rights and I do this for that and I'll forgive this person, but I can't forget that one. And that's where God intervened and said, Jay, you can't do it, but through me, you can. I will forgive them, I have forgiven them. And when you accept that, we can, it's by your grace, you glue our hearts back together, right? God's grace glues our hearts back together. And then we start being healed. And we start, <laughs> it's just like, it's no, there's nothing, some people get bored with it. It's like, what do I do with my life daily when I don't sit there and judge others? Like, what else is there to do? I mean, I'm not trying to be that person, but I've been there. And it's like, uh, when, you, when you say, look, just don't judge them. Okay, yeah. Mm -hmm. I'm not doing that. I can't do it. No, you can't. By God's grace, you can. And that's when the things change. And you start loving those that you... You can't love, but he can, and you can through him. So let me read some scriptures. Last thing, oh, I'll go on scripture. But you know what gets me is you have, many are not aware of grace. 
We don't understand it because we never really had to understand it. And, and I think it comes in different points of people's lives that that light bulb goes off and it's never the same after. But, <laughs> you know, they truly never have messed up enough to experience God's grace. We've always, we said the right things, we've done the right things, we showed up to the right things, we, we've substituted the, the reality for ritual, we, we're part of a group, and we read our Bible once or twice, and hey, you, you could just blow me away with Bible knowledge. But without grace and without love, you're just a singing, like clinging symbol and <laughs> clinging, whatever. My mind just went blank. But you know what I mean, what, what they say, Paul says. So 2 Corinthians 12, 9 says, But he said to me, My grace is sufficient for you, for my power is made perfect in weakness. Therefore, I will boast all the more gladly of my weaknesses so that the power of Christ may rest upon me. This is, this is the number one issue, I would say, in grace, is we have to understand to receive grace, we can't be perfect in ourselves. We have to remove our innocence. Really, what innocence means is being non-wounded. We're not wounded, right? Well, we are. Okay, and, and often that veil doesn't get parted until we realize that we <laughs> are not perfect. And that's, you know what? It's okay. It's like, now once I get that person to see that, it's like ball game is on, like, boom. It's a whole new thing. It's like a whole new perspective. So when I'm weak, you're, he's strong. Okay. Wow. I always ran for my weaknesses. Or always covered them up. Or always fooled people to think I'm okay and got this. So you're telling me that's where I could have truly been touched by the Spirit. Yeah. So... Ephesians 2, 8 through 9, for by grace you have been saved through faith, and this is not your own doing. It is the gift of God, not a result of works, so that no one may boast. It's not about you doing anything. It's about you receiving everything that Christ has for you, that God has for you. It's not, again, let me repeat, it's not about you doing anything but instead, it's about you receiving everything God has for you through his son, Christ Jesus. It's a big difference. You mean you don't have to go to church? Well, number one, you are the church. Two, no, go to church. But two, know that he's not up there taking attendance. I'm sorry, but he's not. And you know what? If you segregate from the body for long, your life will start showing up and you will, like, I need to get back to, to, to a body. Like, I need to be a part of the body. A part of the body isn't meant to be cut off from the rest. But if you're going just to go so you feel better or you think God's marked you present, You'll always need something else to do before you believe that it has been done for you. Um, Romans 6, 14, for sin will have no dominion over you since you are not under the law, but under grace. I fought the law and the law won. That song comes to me every time I hear the law. I fought it. We all do. You know, you, you learn the law so you can maybe know it enough not to break the law. But the law is, is death. See, Jesus 
was sent here to fulfill the law. But we keep wanting to shed and sacrifice and do and do and do in the name of Jesus for something we've already been given. But out of that givenness, it's like, I didn't receive this. I didn't, I didn't do anything to deserve this. So if I share this with people, like that's good news. It's not about what you've done or what you did, but what has been done for you. When people realize that, they come to life. They find true life in Christ. It goes, uh, James 4, 6, but he gives more grace. Therefore, it says, God opposes the proud, but gives grace to the humble. It just don't, see, it just don't make sense. Like, you think he wants somebody that's got all the answers and that's done it right. That's my man. And he's like, no, absolutely, actually, I want Paul. You're the man because you killed Christians. And you know what? I want you to have that same demeanor to say, but see, I'm going to turn it, what evil meant for, <laughs> what evil meant for harm or hurt, he turned it for good. First Corinthians five or First Corinthians fifteen ten. But by the grace of God, I am what I am, and His grace toward me was not in vain. On the contrary, I worked harder than any of them, though it was not I, but the grace of God that was with me. <laughs> this is Paul talking out of two sides of his mouth. Often I do as well, because he gets you into this. It's like he gets the people like, yeah, like I've been the best. Christian this week. But yet, in 1 Timothy 1, 15, it says, here's a trustworthy saying that deserves full acceptance. Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners of whom I am the worst. Paul. So God used the worst sinner to preach about the best thing ever in God's grace and the gospel of good news. But see, it's not good news if you have to, if you have to do something to, to get it. That's not it. I heard this the other day. Instead of, you know, the Old Testament was about us um, giving blood back to God, okay, to pay for our, our, our wrongdoings or whatever, to get right with God. We thought, you know, we need to pay him back with sacrifice. Then it was animals. Sometimes it was people. But God switched the whole deal and said, you know what? I'm going to shed blood to get to you by sending my son to live a perfect life and to die a sinner's death so that in him you can be forgiven and receive eternal life through him. Now that is awesome news. And it's humbling news because you didn't do anything to deserve it. Romans 5, 8 says, But God shows his love for us in that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. For the grace of God, Titus 2, 11 through 14, For the grace of God has appeared, bringing salvation for all people, training us up 
training us to renounce ungodliness and worldly possessions and to live self-controlled, upright, godly lives in the present age, waiting for our blessed hope, the appearing of the glory of great God and Savior Jesus Christ, who gave himself for us to redeem us from all lawlessness and to purify for himself a people for his own possession who are zealous for good works. Okay, hold on. Hold on. Um... Weren't y'all just saying it? it's not about our works? See, that's the whole thing with Paul. You got to have this, this different mind. I'll just be honest. You have to have the mind of Christ to understand it. Because, see, Paul understands that you must die before you die. You must be transformed and then... You get it. And he's saying, it, often he'll talk both ways and say, you know, it gets that people in there and they're like, yeah, I got this right. And then it's just like Jesus in sight. And then he flips and drops the mic and says, uh, first will be last and the last will be first. And... Um, <laughs> And people are like, what? Sell all your possessions. What? Whoa, 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 whoa. Jesus, 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 chill out, bro. <laughs> now go back to that first part you're saying, okay. But then you lack one thing. Sell all your possessions, give it to the poor, and follow me. And that rich, young ruler said what many of us say daily or don't say and just continue doing the way he says I'm, I can't do that and it's mainly because we don't trust God to, for, to provide and to give us more life more grace more abundance in him you might not be abundant according to this world but you will in heaven in the kingdom, your currency will go through the roof. And you know what? That's the only currency that counts. All right. Um, Second Timothy, you then, my child, be strengthened by the grace that is in Christ Jesus. For the grace of God has appeared in Titus, bringing salvation for all people. Excuse me. Titus. I don't even know if you wrote this, but Titus, I got a question. So, for the grace of God has appeared, it, it brings salvation for all people. It not, not, you mean just Jewish people or like the landowners or, or like the rich people or like the white people or just black people or if they speak English or they attend my church denomination. Is that what you mean? No. What I mean is all. Oh. Well, okay. <laughs> uh. All right. Continue on. Um, I hope this is making sense to somebody that, like, you have choices in your life. You really do. Like, you can wake up tomorrow, and, and some days I choose this. And you know what? I'm just going to be miserable today. And you know what? I'm going to make sure everybody knows it too. So I feel better. Or instead of living in that misery, you can choose mystery and choose grace and saying, look, Lord, I don't have it today. I don't want to do this. I ain't going to do it. So you're going to have to. I will allow you to. And just go to that. And I guarantee you, you will feel something. If you have truly accepted Christ and know that there's nothing you do, it's just him through you, you will find an overflow. Um, 2 Corinthians 9, 8, or sorry, let me go back to this, sorry. Um, John 1, 17, for the law was given through Moses Grace and truth came through Jesus Christ. 
I love that. I love that verse, mainly because of the order. Okay, so it says, starts with a law given through Moses, but then says grace and truth through Jesus Christ. Grace precedes truth. Now, what I'm saying that is that God knows that he is the truth. He's also grace, full. So we've all heard this, you know, I'm just telling the truth. Okay, like tell the truth. Go tell Jesus, tell him the truth. Tell the truth the truth. What? No, you know what I mean. I know the truth. Okay, but does he know you? Or is this the, the truth according to the gospel of Jay? Maybe. But he knows, look, like I said before, the truth is the truth. But there is someone that precedes grace with tr before truth and saying it with a graceful manner and saying that, look, <laughs> I, I thought I was doing it right too. I'm just as guilty as you, buddy. Like Paul, perfect example. I thought I was doing the right thing. I thought I was gonna be like at the top of the top in heaven. But I, was, I, I, I didn't get it right. So we all are reminded that it's God's grace that keeps us humbled and on the right path. And God is able to make all grace abound to you so that having all sufficiency in all things at all times, you may abound in every good work. Second Corinthians 9, 8. Second Timothy 4, 22, it says, The Lord be with your spirit. Grace be with you. 2 Peter 3.18 says, But grow in the grace and knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. To him be the glory both now and to the day of eternity. Amen. Ephesians 4.7, But grace was given to each of us according to the measure of Christ's gift. You know what I think? I think... What he's saying is, if this person truly receives my grace, I'm going to just keep pouring it because I know they won't hog it. They won't pick who deserves it because they know they didn't deserve it. And I can give that person so much grace that it just oozes out of them. That is a spirit-filled person. Not saying grace, not doing grace, but being grace. It's a difference. And you know what? You can be graceful in everything that you do. Or you can be the opposite. You can be critical, um, cynical. You can be angry resentful I've run out of cinemas but anyways um so I think you get it and Hebrews 5 9 it says and being made perfect he became the source of eternal salvation to all who obey him so I'm going to stop there I have more I just Simply looked up grace um, quotes. So I'm going to share with you, if you're still on here, something I discovered last week. It's about 10 minutes long, and uh, I will put it in the comments once you're done as well. But I'm going to play it, and it's called A Prayer of Examine. It, it's based on Psalm 139.1, and I just want you to listen, and I just want you to hear it. And... If you need to go back, I'll put a link here. I also have the written out form of it. But just just be right now, if you can be. If you can't, come back at another time. But I'm telling you, this is something that will truly give you some, some peace at night. 
and it's a great, great exercise to practice so that you can reflect on your life each day. So let me play this. To journey with you into a time of refreshment, remembrance, and restoration. The prayer of examine. While something like this ancient prayer has served Jesus' followers for centuries, a Spanish priest named Ignatius of Loyola put together this structure of to reflect back on today, or if you're practicing this in the morning, yesterday. It walks through five steps, all guided by scripture. First, take time to remember that you are in God's presence. Second, reflect on your day through a lens of gratitude. Third, ask God to help you reflect on your day. When did you act like Jesus? When did you miss it? Fourth, face your shortcomings for the day and ask God for his forgiveness. And fifth, look forward to the day to come, walking with God into whatever is ahead. This is a reflective prayer exercise that you can come back to over and over again. Use this exercise whenever God brings it to mind. If you'd like to build this into a daily or weekly habit, you can just replay this exercise every day for one to two weeks until you get the rhythm of the prayer and simply practice on your own. And with that, let's begin. Acknowledge his presence. Find a quiet place. Get away from the noise and the busy. Take a deep breath and get settled. If you need more time at any point, feel free to hit pause along the way. Imagine this examine exercise as a rich time with you and Jesus on a couch together. Playing on the screen in front of you are video clips from your day, and Jesus has the remote. Let him hit pause, choose the clips he wants to bring your attention to, and converse with you about what he sees and wants you to see. But before playing any clips, take this moment to remember that God is right beside you. This morning, you woke up into a world that God created. As you took steps through your day, God walked alongside you. God watched, God led, God nudged, God spoke, God comforted, God worked, God held you. Where can I go from your spirit? Where can I flee from your presence? If I go up to the heavens, you are there. If I make my bed in the depths, you are there. If I rise on the wings of dawn, if I settle on the far side of the sea, even there your hand will guide me. Your right hand will hold me. Acknowledge his presence. Review with gratitude. Now let's spend some time in gratitude. Let the spirit bring to mind moments from the day that show his abundance, his love, his comfort. This is the point where Jesus shows you the clips of your day that showcase his goodness to you. Let him guide you to the big things and the small things. Everything from your breath this morning to the moments of beauty put on display before you. From the gift of the people you intersected with today to the way he guided you when you needed him. From the flavors of the food you ate to the way your loved one's face looks when they smile. Reflect with joy on these moments, then thank your loving Father who gives you these good gifts.
9, 13 through 14. For you created my innermost being. You knit me together in my mother's womb. I praise you because I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Your works are wonderful. I know that full well. Reflection and examine. Now it is time to look back through your day in reference to your words, actions, feelings, and behaviors. Hand Jesus the remote. Let the Spirit guide you throughout your day. What feelings did you experience today? Boredom? Excitement? Anger? Compassion? Fear? Resentment? Calm? Go to those moments and talk to your Father about them. Who did you interact with or have conversations with? How were you Jesus to them today? Where did you fall short? Where did Jesus show his face through others today? Where did you notice God's presence and where were you oblivious? Spend time with God, bringing to mind the moments that he wants you to see. Psalm 139, 1 through 6. Lord, you have examined me. You know me. You know when I sit down and when I stand up. You perceive my thoughts from afar. You study my traveling and my resting. You are thoroughly familiar with all of my ways. Before a word is on my tongue, Lord, you know it completely. You hem me in behind and before, and you lay your hand upon me. Such knowledge is too wonderful for me. Review with repentance. As you reflected on the day, you likely encountered some moments where you fell short of who God made you to be, where you may have been out of tune with him. Think back to those conversations where something was said or not said or where you responded in a way that Jesus would not respond, or a place where you had a thought that was not captured and made obedient to Christ. Where today did you act on your own instead of in line with the spirit within you? Where did you live out of an identity other than an adopted son or daughter of the king? Let God graciously bring these moments to mind. Ask your Father who loves you, for what do I need to ask forgiveness? Is there anything I need to make right, whether by intended or unintended actions? In what ways would you have me grow, mature, change, or heal? Let him reveal these things that embrace you with his truth and grace.
139, 23 through 24. Search me, God, and know my heart. Test me and know my anxious thoughts. See if there is any offensive way in me and lead me in the way everlasting. Look forward to tomorrow. Your time reflecting on your day with Jesus is coming to an end. He has lovingly shown you what he wants you to see. You have thanked him, asked for his forgiveness and help, and now you get the chance to look forward to tomorrow. Your father wants unhindered abundance for you, within you and through you. And if he gives you life tomorrow, that is a gift of love to be enjoyed, used well, and lived in the presence of your loving shepherd. Ask God to bring to mind what is ahead of you. What meetings, conversations, tasks, or troubles do you know are coming tomorrow? Where do you need God's help to live as Jesus tomorrow, where you missed it today? In all things, large and small, commit to him your tomorrow. Psalm 139, 16 through 18. Every day of my life was recorded in your book. Every moment was laid out before a single day had passed. How precious are your thoughts about me, O oh God. They cannot be numbered. I can't even count them. They outnumber the grains of sand. And when I wake up, you are still with me. Father, Son, Spirit, thank you for caring about me, even about my day. May this life you have given me be lived increasingly for your glory. May I live day by day ever more towards my already identity. I am loved, saved, adopted, set free, set apart set forth. May I live accordingly, for your namesake. Amen. All right. I don't know who else is with me on that, but I know just in that time right there. Whew, that's good. And if you've ever been in that place where you truly know there's nowhere you can't go, that God isn't there with you, as, as the psalmist says, or David. You know me. You have examined me, Lord. You know me. You know when I sit and when I stand. You perceive my thoughts from afar. You study my traveling and my resting. You are thoroughly familiar with all my ways. Before a word is on my tongue, you, Lord, know it completely. You hem me in behind and before, and you will lay your hand upon me. Such knowledge is too wonderful, wonderful for me. Psalm 139, 1 through 6. So I hope you have a great week, and um, remember our challenge, be Grace filled. Don't be a grace hog. Stand grace. First receive it from the Lord. And he will give you what you need. And I pray for God's peace with you tonight. And I want to just add real quick, Father, thank you for this time this evening. Thank you for giving me a word of yours to share. For those who have ears, let them hear. Lord, 
And in, in this world, we can be so many things. And the last thing we always seem to want to pick is what you want us to be in you. So Lord, we repent and turn away from anything that is blocking our path to you and your way. Lord, your ways are good. Your ways lead to eternal life. Your ways are not the ways of the world. So Lord, this week, let us be filled with your grace. Lord, if someone's on here that's hearing this and truly doesn't know about your grace, Lord, I pray that their heart opens and they they cry out to you and they truly ask for your grace and your forgiveness and your promises. Lord, you are our shepherd. You know everything about us, even those things we have hidden to the rest of the world. And Lord, we know in Ephesians it says, what is exposed to the light will become light. And if we want our light to shine brighter, your light in us, we must discover all the things that are hindering and blocking our light to shine. Because Lord, sometimes we know that you use your light within us to bring those that are lost in the darkness to you. So just show them a way. Point them your way, Lord. Pray for my friend Michelle and her husband that's receiving chemo. Lord, I pray for Jean Ann in Seattle. She's a sweet lady. And uh, I know that your plans are, are, are good. Your plans are not our plans. And Lord, we know that you will give us peace that is beyond our understanding. Not peace of this world, but peace only through you. And Lord, I pray that you just shower her with that peace. And Lord, protect her and guide her. Lord, I pray for anybody else that is struggling health-wise, physically, mentally, spiritually. Lord, we're at war, we know, but you fight for us. <laughs> You're the one that defends us. We must put our full armor on each day as we wake up, Lord. And I just pray for your strength and our weaknesses. And Lord, give us the courage to admit when we are weak so you can be strong and you can shine and show your glory through our weaknesses. You are the reason for everything, Lord. And I just pray that you keep our world from imploding one another to, to persecuting, to hating, dividing. Lord, we are your body. We are the church. We are your church. We are parts of it. And that all your creation is, Lord, they just don't know it. So don't let us say we don't need a certain part because that's a lie, Lord. That's a lie from the enemy. But let us welcome those that may feel left out, that may need to know you and know that they have a seat at your table. And Lord, <laughs> what a experience it is to be at your table. So as we go through this evening, this week, Lord, let us be filled with your grace and your mercy and your love and let it pour over onto those we intersect, those we don't even know, Lord. Just let us be grace. Show grace, Lord. Be grace. Because we know that there's enough 
of that that comes to kill, steal, and destroy. And you are about holding all things together for your good, beloved. It's in your son's name we pray all of this. Amen. Good night. May God's peace be yours. You can go watch Yellow Stuff now. Have a great week. May God's peace be yours tonight. Don't be a great solid.